Okay, I'm with Trevor Hunt, who's the PTQ winner for Little Rock, Arkansas, for Nagoya. And just tell us, Trevor, what did you choose for your deck this weekend? Uh, I chose Boros. Boros um, won the PTQ last week with a buddy of mine. He played it, pretty much ran the table. Um, he said it had a very, very start, very, very fast start, and with Ranger Vios and Figure Destiny. It had a lot more range than most of the aggro decks in this format. So having the ability to aggro so fast and take away so much life points from the opponent and then if a game stalls, play a figure destiny and just win later on is quite the reach. And this is your first PTQ top eight? Yes. Never mind the win. This is my first PTQ top eight, first first win obviously. Um, I haven't started playing Magic competitively until about six, eight months ago when I, I won states in Oklahoma and that pretty much got the fire in me. So I've been traveling pretty much every weekend to some sort of tournament and with, the, with other events you can just go to a tournament pretty much every week and that's what I've been doing. Sure. And tell me a little bit about your playtesting background from what you said earlier. Okay. I playtested quite a bit. My buddy playtested against a lot of the decks. Um, I found that there was bad matchups against a lot of the heavy hitter decks. Green-white aggro, green-white hideaway, a lot of the decks that play Primeval Titan and Bane Slayer, Knight of the Relic Fire. Um, I was lucky, lucky enough to dodge all those decks. Um, the matchup against fairies with Cunning Spark Mage main deck is pretty phenomenal. So I ha wasn't really worried about those fairies at all today. Yeah. The, just the, the reach of the deck makes it a phenomenal choice. Shoot. The Spark Mage certainly seemed to be the bane of your finalist. Today. Yes, absolutely. Uh, playing uh, a turn three Spark Mage, um, letting him Ventillion click another Spark Mage, and me drawing another Spark Mage pretty much sealed the deal, but he couldn't just play anything else after that. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, is there anything special in your mind as being your best play of the day? Best play of the day? Hmm. Um, I let a lot of people walk into Arc Lightning. And a lot of people just walked right into it. Just like a lot of the Lord decks, I played against Mirfolk twice. And I could have easily got a, a cheap two for one with it, but people would just play the Lord and just let me two for one them with two mana, which is such a tempo breaker against the. If I could get a two for one with anything, and that deck is just phenomenal. It just sets every opponent back so much. Okay. Can I ask as well, um, the glasses? There doesn't look to be any actual lenses in those glasses. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm quite the individual. I like being unique. I have a huge sense of humor. I, I represent the carefree individual. And the glasses represent it a lot too. I, I don't really care what anybody thinks about me. And if they think I'm just a scrub by wearing them, that's in my advantage. So it has a little bit too full. Like I get, I get the comments, I make make conversation, lighten the mood. The matches go on a lot less stressful, especially in the late rounds. If somebody else is, if, if I'm cracking jokes, they're they're not going to be as stressed. So that is thing you can do to make the game more fun. Yeah, because magic players are often just too moody a crowd. Yeah, it? especially at these high level events, they just get they lose track of what the game is. The game is a game, but when there's so much on the line, people don't take it as a game anymore. People get angry, people get frustrated, and games happen. Like, bad things happen, people get land screwed, stuff like that. It's just, it's part of the game. So if I can crack jokes and make people either crack a smile or be less stressed, it's good on me, so. Okay. Congratulations again, Trevor. It's always good to have a good character in Magic. Yeah, Thanks. absolutely. Thank you, sir.